1066. Yeah, normal. Not bad that. One of the most important castles in the British Isles, to be quite honest with you. Um, long <laughs> bloody history, of course. But um, <clears throat> when Richard I cleared off to fight the Muslims in the Holy Land, he left his very stupid, vain, stupid, idiotic brother, John, in charge of the country. And of course, John, all the stories of Robin Hood and the Sheriff of Nottingham and John, everything else, some of it is actually true. And uh, John actually occupied Nottingham Castle for quite a few years. Um, while he was here, he did naughty things, obviously. I'm not going to mention Robin Hood again, because I don't know whether he existed or not. But um, amongst other things, King John attacked the Welsh. You're there. You're there. Uh, and defeated uh, Prince Llewellyn. Yeah. Took, the, took one of his castles. What was his? Llewellyn Ap. Was it Llewellyn Ap Griffith? That's right. Llewellyn Ap Griffith, right? Um, he defeated him in battle. John did. Uh, took it to the, the castle where he was. Anyway, basically, that was the situation. But they came to a bit of a truce. And John said he'd leave, you know, he'd leave the Welsh alone. But he had to, um, <coughs> Llewellyn had to provide him with 28 hostages. Boys, uh, some of them only 12 years of age. And John brought them back here to Nottingham Castle and kept them mm, prisoner. Yeah, prisoner, but they were well, like Mary Queen of Scots when she was in. She wasn't in prison. She was allowed out. She, the, the, the boys were allowed to uh, wander the, the grounds of the castle. They weren't allowed out, but they wandered. The... Anyway, then Llewellyn um, reneged on the deal, apparently, and um, started attacking the, the English again. So John decided, uh, as he'd got 28 hostages, he brought them, dragged them out of their, their quarters and hanged all 28 of them from the battlements here. And they say that to this very day you can still hear the terrified and ghostly screams of those kids, some of them only 12 years of age, uh, being dragged out from the quarters, uh, screams, and their death throes have, well, they hear uh, the sound of ropes um, swinging. Like as if you know you're thrown over and the rope snaps and, and so they're all hanged from I don't know whether it was this part of the battlements, but they were hanged from the and then left hanging there as a warning to the Welsh. I'm sure you couldn't see it from here, but you know that, that was the idea. Um, anyway, I showed you a picture of Mortimer's hold. Uh, no, oh hang on, hang on. John holed himself up in there when his when his brother Richard came back. And so Richard the First had a word with the Earl of Derby, William de Ferrers, whose dad had been a Knights Templar, Tuckbury Castle, um, and they laid siege to this castle and eventually defeated John, and John was, would you believe, pardoned by his brother, and of course obviously became king when Richard died. Um, that's done the King John. No, it hasn't done the King John bit. This is where the ghosty stuff, this is where my theories come in, right? You know, you all know what I think about Christianity and religion and the church and how it's created ghosts. Well, this is a bit of proof, big bit of proof. Two, two, two of these stories are, are what I use as proof, right? King John was a bad lad. Well, for a start, he, he had 28 Welsh boys hanged here. Um, he was excommunicated by the Pope because of all his misdeeds and bad doings. When he died at Newark Castle, they say because he'd eaten too many peaches, I don't know if that's true or not, but that's the story, he was buried in Worcester Cathedral. don't know why, but he was buried in Worcester Cathedral. In 1700 and something, they exhumed the tomb of King John, who, as I say, was a bad lad, knew he was going to burn in hell, yeah, because he'd been excommunicated by the Pope. When they found King John's body in the tomb, they found him dressed as a Benedictine monk, 
with a sackcloth veil across his skeletal face. Why would the King of England want to be buried as a Benedictine, as a Christian Benedictine monk? Any ideas? No. No, because don't forget it's the body of Christ that came out of it. So in other words, on the day of judgment, yeah, the body comes back together. And then you get in through the pearly gates, apparently. Yeah? Well, if he was buried as a Christian Benedictine monk with a veil across his face, he presumed that St. Peter wouldn't notice who he was when he was going through them pearly gates. Dressed as a good Christian. Not an excommunicated Christian, but a Benedictine monk. This, this, is, this is what was in their minds. This was in their psyche. That's why people from those periods become ghosts, basically. Right, so, and then the next bit of proof, which is a bit of a story here. In 1330, King Edward II was on the throne. Edward II was not quite as good as his dad, Edward I, to say the least. Uh, Edward II was gay. He had a very healthy family, but he was gay. He was married to the daughter of the King of France, Queen Isabella, known as the She-Wolf of France. She was a bitch. She really was, I'm telling you. Uh, she really wasn't very happy with her gay husband knocking off quite a few male favourites, to say the least. Uh, so in the end, she sort of left him and got involved with his best mate, Roger Mortimer. Mortimer's hole? Getting there, slowly. Now, Roger Mortimer apparently wasn't gay. Oh, he might have been by, this is what I because he was knocking off Queen Isabella, and Edward II not very happy about that. So they fled to France. After a little while, they decided that they would actually raise an army, come back to this country, and oppose the king, and take the throne from King Edward II, which they did. Well, they, yes, they did. They, they, they got wasn't it the case that as a brief time they held up in Caerphilly Castle in Wales? Oh, well, yes, because Roger Mortimer was uh, a marcher lord. What? What are the marchers? Uh, basically, territories that weren't technically speaking part of England, but were given those who hold the major titles in England were given land in Wales. Gotcha. So they were called the marchers. Nothing to do with marchers. No. Okay, fair. So anyway, anyway. So, they captured Edward and they put him in Barclay Castle. Um, <clears throat> they wanted to get rid of him. They wanted him gone, dead. But the problem was that if they murdered him by stabbing him, strangling him, suffocating him or anything else, um, somebody might notice that the king's been stabbed or beheaded or strangled or yeah, or whatever. So. They kept him in a room, uh, a prison cell, in Barclay Castle, and they did a dreadful thing to him, which was called, well, was referred to at the time as Horning the Fox. <coughs> and they, uh, two guys burst into the king's bedroom, uh, and they got a cow horn with them, and a red hot poker. And they inserted the cow horn up his backside, which apparently enjoyed that bit. <laughs> but he didn't enjoy the next bit. Because they then thrust a red hot poker up through the cow horn into his insides, burning away, searing away his insides. His ghostly screams can still be heard outside Barclay Castle on the anniversary of his death, 27th of July. Um, and of course, it left no marks on him, no marks at all. And um, Roger Mortimer and Queen Isabella took the throne, ruled England. But Edward II had a son, Edward III, but he was underage. So they ruled for quite a few years as regent, both of them. They came here to Nottingham Castle. Oh, there is a connection. Yes, there is. And held parliament here. I mean, this, 
I have to say I'm very jealous of Nottingham. It is a city. It was a very famous city. They held Parliament here. Anyway, they were holed up here and Edward III, by this time, it wasn't Edward III, he, he hadn't been crowned, but he decided it was time, he, he, he was very upset that his, that his mother had, had his dad murdered, as you can well imagine, and that was she was committing adultery as, as well as everything else with, with his dad's best mate. So Edward III came here to Nottingham Castle with a group of, a few, about 20, 25 soldiers, and camped outside the castle knowing that Mortimer and Queen Isabella were inside. Holed up inside, for want of a better word. Somebody knew about a secret passageway. A cave that led all the way up to the castle. And they told Edward where it was. And him and these guys <coughs> went up through Mortimer's Hole, as it's now called, into the castle and captured his mum and Roger Mortimer. Mortimer was held captive here for a while. His mum, Queen Isabella, was taken to Castle Rising in Norfolk and imprisoned there for the rest of her life. Mortimer was taken to London and put on trial for regicide, which is killing the king and sentenced to be hanged, drawn, and quartered at Tyburn in London. Um, I'm sure you've all heard me going on about hanging, drawing, and quartering at one, but I don't know how many of you know that the whole thing was actually symbolic. It was created for a reason, and would you believe it was designed by Edward I for another Welsh prince, the first person ever hanged, drawn, and quartered in, in, in Britain. Um, and it was symbolic, as well as to torture and to hurt and to send you to hell. And you've all heard the sentence, but one or two of you might not, so we'll do it and I'll tell it you. You were taken, well, from, from your prison cell and dragged backwards to the place of execution. Why backwards? Because what you'd thought of was unnatural. Killing the king. There you will be set. So they dragged you backwards with a horse. There you will, when you get to the place of execution, there you will be hanged between heaven and earth. Not fit to inhabit either. So they hanged you, but not no broken neck and a trapdoor. Really. Like, slow strangulation. So after two or three minutes, you still be alive. Choking a bit, uh, going a bit purple, breathless, but still alive. They cut you down and laid you on a butcher's block. A drawing, quartering and beheading block. A butcher's block for human beings. Your privy parts cut off and burnt before your eyes because you should never have been begotten and you must not be allowed to beget. Children. In other words, cutting off the bloodline. They actually cut off more than the bloodline. <laughs> anyway. Your bowels and entrails to be ripped out of your belly and burnt before your eyes. A good executioner could get you disemboweled <laughs> with all 37 feet of small intestine while you were still alive and conscious. Why? Because of the inward treacherous thoughts you had. They then turned you over onto what was left of your stomach. And your head to be severed from your body. Why? Because your head had thought of the treacherous thoughts. And your body then to be divided into four equal quarters. And those quarters to be at the disposal of whatever king or queen was on the throne at the time. So they would literally quarter you so there'd be four quarters and they were then taken to different parts of the town or the country. In the case of William Wallace, Braveheart, <coughs> They took one quarter to York, one quarter to Edinburgh, one quarter stayed in London, and one quarter went to Carlisle. And the whole idea of that was so that the body parts couldn't come back together. So on the day of judgment, 
there couldn't be any physical resurrection for you and you'd go to hell. And so it's called ghosts. Because basically, if your body wasn't whole, yeah? And so you knew you weren't going to get in up there. I ain't going down there. I'll stop here, thanks. And it's caused ghosts to have stayed behind because they're terrified of divine retribution, hellfire and damnation, and the teachings of the, of the Christian, of the, of the church, basically. And it's, 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 it's right. So, <clears throat> Mortimer's Hole <laughs> is haunted. And it's haunted by the ghost of Roger Mortimer. They say that they see walking down the steps. There are steps going all the way down, which weren't there at the time. I've been through it. Yes, the steps weren't there time. then. But Mortimer's ghost is reputed to be. But I, uh, why would it be? Because he didn't die there. But and I'll tell you why, why I think. And Queen Isabella's screams are heard in Mortimer's Hole as well and the reason that, that well, and, and basically people on quite a few occasions have heard not in English but in medieval French Belle Fitz et a petit du gentil Mortimer couldn't remember that so I don't know <laughs> <laughs> what not? it means what it means is fair son Edward III, this is Queen Isabella's voice, by the way, shouting to her son, Ben Fitz, fair son, pity my gentle Mortimer. And her ghost haunts. Right, now then, Queen Isabella is the other part of my proof about ghosties, right? Because Queen Isabella went mad in Castle Rising and her ghost is frequently seen wandering around what's left of the, the ruins of, of the Castle Rising. But before she died, she insisted that when she was buried, that she was dressed as a Franciscan nun with a veil. Same old story. Why would the Queen of England, daughter of the King of France, want to be buried as a humble nun? She, jo she, jo she actually became a Franciscan nun and insisted on being buried as a Franciscan nun. Why? Because she thought that if she was dressed as a good Christian, when she got to the pearly gates and stood outside waiting to go in, St Peter wouldn't recognise her as, oh, it's that bitch, or Isabella, that had, his, had, her, had her husband murdered, the king. Because murdering the king is the worst crime against God. And so she knew full well that she would not get in through the pearly gates. So she insisted on being buried as a Franciscan nun. But guess what? Because obviously Edward III was king by this time. And when, she, when his mum did die, he insisted that she was buried in her wedding dress. The wedding dress that obviously she wore when she married King Edward II. Very difficult, I find this very difficult, because Queen Isabella was only 12 when she got married. They must have really squeezed her into it. But they, he did have her buried in a wedding dress. You know why, don't you? So that when she did get to the pearly gates, some people would say, mm, we know who you are, kid. You're not coming in here. You're going to... Guys, this is what was in their minds. They believe this stuff. And it's caused ghosts. But right. Why would we see the ghost of Mortimer in Mortimer's Hole? Why would we hear the voice of Queen Isabella screaming in French? Because these tunnels are mainly red sandstone. And most of you know my theories about the fact that red sandstone, especially red sandstone, holds a recording of a tragic and traumatic event. So what the ghosts are of there are not ghosts at all, they're recordings of a traumatic and tragic event. Yeah. And the only thing that it, it can't yeah. it can only record sight and sound. That phone can only record sight and sound. It can't record smells. It can't rec re it can't record <laughs> a, a sense of for, for, you know what I mean? And that's my take on on yeah, you know, I've always said Castles are huge stone tape recorders. 
that hold tragic and traumatic events. And we call them ghosts, because we're frightened of them. It's the image of a dead person, and we call it a ghost. Yeah.